I haven't done a talking video in a while, but uh, since I'm still hurt and uh, I need to film some videos, and in the first few days that my rib was hurt, I didn't film anything, so I'm starting to fall a little bit behind because I film enough videos to go ahead so I can take breaks, but run out of those. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about a subject that I think everyone's kind of randomly thought about, and I just want to do a little bit of research, and oh boy, is the research so contradictory. Now this is in the most in-depth uh, analysis. This isn't dumb data where I crunch like an infinite amount of numbers. This is a few Google searches. Now just sort of seeing like what shakes loose. And what I'm getting is a similar thing that you would get when you try to prove your own political agenda or opinion, where it's just like, you're just gonna find the echo chamber that suits what you personally think. Uh, so I found some evidence saying that skateboarding is dying. I found some evidence that skateboarding is doing better than ever. I've also found statistics that support one that seems to me that could be interpreted completely different with different reasonings of why you're getting those statistics. But keep in mind, I'm just like, I've been skating for 22 years. I'm not that smart. This is just my interpretation of it. And I kind of just want to have this conversation with you guys. Comment down below, call to action. Uh, what you think is actually happening? Because I can go right now based off of what I see. There's more skate parks than ever. I'm seeing more skateboarders than ever. I also live in California. So my idea of what a lot of skateboarders is, is already very, very low. So it could just be me comparing it subconsciously to the skateboarding that I saw back when I lived home, which was basically barely anyone. And most people were getting into scootering. So if you would have asked me five years ago, I would have said, yeah, I think skateboarding is kind of dying. So a couple things to talk about right out the gate. Uh, I think the first thing that might come to mind is the Olympics, even though evidently the Olympics was the least watched Olympics in the last like 33 years or something like that. Skateboarding did do pretty well. Even though I have heard someone say that it didn't do really well, I just read an article that said, it brought a lot of more people. In fact, it was in the top five most watched things in Brazil, but that's just one country. Obviously there's a whole other world out there, but supposedly skateboarding didn't do too bad, um, which makes sense because it's supposed to be this exciting thing to watch. I do think that people were really disappointed when they watched skateboarding though. Because I think when most people who aren't very familiar with skateboarding watch it, they're like, oh, they don't land a lot or, oh, their tricks aren't as flashy. Because I remember growing up, I like watching BMX the most because they're flipping and they're going real high. And like, there's there was always like groundbreaking tricks. Like someone was always doing something new. Like this guy did a 720 tail whip one foot. Like there was always like this new thing that everyone would freak out about. But with skateboarding, you're not really seeing like new tricks. Like no one's in street league doing like, he did the first 540 front side without grab. Like you don't see that. It's mostly like, he did a really, really hard trick that's a slight variation off the other trick that everyone else did. Um, so I think to the spectator, unless you're kind of somewhat versed in skateboarding, it could be lackluster to watch, even though it does okay, I think. Probably not as good as some of us who skateboard would expect it to do. Once again, that's just my opinion. But uh, let's get into some of these things that I read, some of these statistics, and I'll give you what I think of them and why I think they might say what they say. So the first thing that I found, uh, that one of the top searches was skateboarding became one of the fastest growing sports. It's currently over 13 million skateboarders and the number is growing at 10% per year. This makes skateboarding one of the fastest growing sports in the world, overtaking basketball and football. And I believe this article is 2021, as most of the articles that I found weren't exactly right now. But then the article also goes on to say, skateboarding can make you rich. There are many millionaires that owe their wealth to the sport of skateboarding. And to that, I would be like, I don't know if many's the uh, right word. Cause like, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're not considering just pro skaters, right? Like I'm assuming that I was talking about Bam and Tony Hawk and for whatever reason, Brandon Beeble's a millionaire I heard. Uh, but if I remember there's an article that came out that someone made, it was like skaters who are millionaires. And that list was stupid short. And there's a lot of people who you would think would be in it who weren't in it. Uh, a lot of people make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some of the top guys, yes, but millions is, that's a, that's a pretty tough one to hit. But people who own companies maybe, uh, or some of the higher ups, I could see considering them and being like, so maybe some of them are millionaires. But once again, like hard goods and shit like that, there's not as much money in skateboarding, I think, as people assume. Not to mention skateboarding is very much gatekeeping itself out of getting more money for fear of what, becoming less cool or it losing its luster or whatever the reasoning may be. Skateboarding has always been, you know, you gotta do it because you love it, blah, blah, blah. But also like Red Bull, you guys can come in and Nike you can come in too, but like, but not you count Chocula. It varies. I imagine it's uh, how cool something is or how much money they actually end up just throwing at skateboarding until we finally are like, all right, come on in. But yeah, I, I don't really trust this article just because it's like, there's so many skaters who make millions of dollars. It says that just because it says there's many millionaires. I just think many is such an exaggeration. And then it goes on to say skateboarding is safe. Skateboarding is relatively safe and has far less injuries in sports like basketball and baseball and football and soccer. And that's a statistic I'm not sure how to interpret just because it's like, okay, is that like per person? Like what your percentage of injury is? Because I do understand why someone playing football would get injured more often. In skateboarding, you're constantly thinking, I don't want to fall and I don't want to get hurt while I try to land this trick. It's almost the first thing that's in the front of your mind. Whereas in like basketball and football and stuff like that, you're probably thinking, 
I need this point, I'm probably not gonna get hurt because it just seems less likely. It's skateboarding has this like danger factor to it because you're constantly scared. And I think in those other sports, you're not really scared to play basketball. You're pretty like you're pretty much throwing your body weight into whatever you do, fully committing to it uh, in ways that I wish I could do on a skateboard. So in that sense, it makes sense, but I don't know what the actual statistic is compared to each other. That's just what this article is saying. Another thing that it says is the global skateboarding market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 3.1 from 2019 to 2025. Uh, and I believe this was written in 2021. And I do know that there's a ton of companies coming up. I mean, every day there's like a new board company and it's really uh, screwing their established companies. That's for sure. Cause like when you really think about it, okay, let's say you're a skateboard company, you're a big one. Let's say you're anti-hero skateboards. It's no longer like you're competing with like the top 20 other brands. You're also competing with every like local skate shop and every kid who goes in that local shop has a pretty decent likelihood of buying the shop board. Cause one, it's cheaper. Two, it's supporting something that's literally right in front of their eyes. And then you have to worry about the local companies too. Lo local shops usually push local companies. So for every skate shop out there that actually has its own skateboard, that's like another brand that you're technically competing with, even though it's like in a small sector. So I think uh, skateboards, I know of a few board companies that I'm not gonna say who they are, who are like, they're fucked. Like there's, there's companies that are going under like this year, like big companies that are going under this year because when the pandemic hit, everyone's selling boards like hotcakes, the orders were through the roof. So everyone put in these crazy orders. Everyone was really backed up far behind. They sell a bunch of boards, yes, but then they're left with an insane amount of boards when it all slowed down. Uh, when everyone had all this free time um, from their jobs and from schools or whatever, they had time to pick up new hobbies. Skateboarding was just like popping, man. Plus people were skating more because they weren't working. So they're going through more product. Uh, and now that everything's back to normal, no one's buying boards right now. Like I know that for like an actual fact from several sources, no one's buying wood right now with the exception of extremely, extremely few companies. I mean like count them on half of one hand companies are uh, buying wood right now because they're actually still selling boards. So that's gonna probably not be great for skateboarding. But what I think we're really talking about right here is skateboarding participation because the struggle of the industry obviously will reflect on the struggle of how fast it grows because of marketing to people outside of skateboarding. But it says the market value is 1.9 billion right under that. Uh, at a, di a different article wrote this uh, in 2018, but before, before the pandemic hit, but is projected to reach 2.4 billion by 2025. And now they're saying it's even likely to grow or even more. And as I'm reading these things, I'm thinking to myself, am I actually seeing more people at the skate park? And I really do think I am. Cause there's so many new skate parks popping up. I mean, the amount of yellow skate parks that have popped up within a, within a few golf swings of me has gone up quite a bit. And with all these new skate parks, you think it would really make a lot of the older ones empty. But uh, for every new skate park that pops up, I'm, I'm sorry, El Sereno is always gonna have a lot of people. Chevy Chase is always gonna have people there. In fact, they don't seem to be getting any less and the new skate parks are still super crowded it so i i feel like it's it's getting bigger based off of whatever i'm seeing in my very small window of california but i will also say i was just back home on the east coast for just shy of a month and i did go to skate parks i did go street skating and it was definitely more skaters than i've ever seen over there before i moved away like i said earlier when i moved it just seemed like skateboarding was kind of like falling apart and then right under that it says the popularity of skateboarding in the united states peaked in 2020 and 2021 nearly 8.8 .8 million annual participants above the age of six in the previous years the numbers of skateboarding in the United States had been stagnant around 6.4 million. I don't know how they're pulling these numbers about how many people are riding skateboards. And I guess these, this other article that I get into that says the exact opposite, so skateboarding is dying, provides some of the numbers that they're coming up with. So we'll get to that when we get to that, What in fact, which in fact I think is the next things that we're getting to. I don't know. But how do you, how do you find these numbers? Are you compiling like sales of boards and assuming every board is for another skater or uh is this based off of public skate parks that have people keeping track of the skaters that come in and out or is this some sort of guesstimation of all these different numbers i don't know i believe it's stephen wright who said uh 61.3 percent of statistics are made up right on the spot though it could have been mitch hedberg one or the other so let's look at the article that says skateboarding is dying fewer people are looking for skateboard skateboards and skate parks online than ever before as shown by the fact that skateboarding searches on google has decreased industry studies show skateboarding is involvement is down for nearly every age group, including the youth. Participation in skateboarding has declined in the past 10 years. Parks less crowded than they have ever been. Skateboarding companies are closing. Okay, well, I think the skateboarding companies are closing can definitely be explained by the fact that there's just more companies than ever. Everyone in there, every pro skater who's at the end of their career just decides that they want to try to start a company because they're like, oh, I have 100,000 followers on Instagram. 
maybe if I could sell a board to like this many of them, I'll be okay. But the problem is everyone else is doing that and you're not, you're competing with everyone. You're taking sales from everyone. It's just an oversaturation. I also think that that's the reason that in YouTube, you see some of the bigger channels like Braille and stuff, uh, numbers like really slow down because there's just a lot more people doing YouTube now and they no longer have like eight options. It's no longer like Christian, John Hill, Braille, Revive, individual dudes from Revive team, Brian Arnett and Skate Rat. Like now there's like just like a fuck ton of us. So the numbers are just being spread out uh, among other people. And I think that's luckily for like truck companies and stuff like that, no one's really fucking around with that no new shoe companies are really coming out except for Yuma and well we're all seeing how that's going think about how important america was eight years ago ten years ago like america was like the skateboard shoe company and now no one really cares i mean i feel the same way about a lot of board companies like all the main board companies that i grew up looking at that was like this is like our core like now it's like you know polar and shit like that but it used to be like, dude, Toy Machine is untouchable. Zero had a really long run. Baker was untouchable. And Baker still does okay. But they're nowhere near what they were. Like, they were the company. Alien Workshop and uh, Habitat were just like the sickest shit ever. And now it's just like, not that you're like a kook if you ride for it, but it's definitely not like the company to ride for. And of course, one of the biggest falls, in my opinion, is Girl and Chocolate. Which, for me growing up, not only had like the old heads really stoked on it, like the 90s skaters, but like our generation was also super stoked on it. Because it had like a lot of the new guys as well as the legends, Eric Costum was putting out parts. And then of course, when Guy Mariano made his comeback, it was so sick. And now it's just like another background board company. I'm not saying that it's not cooler than like, you know, some stuff out, some of the companies out of Dwindle, but it's not anywhere near what it once was. So look, let's look at some of these statistics that they present. How grim the current stats are. Let's look at the data from Google. The following graph is shown a total number of searches, people searching for the word skateboard park. And it's just like, it. I'll put the image up here. The, somewhere over here maybe uh yeah the graph is very like on, on the way down and the numbers started in 2004 and the reason i think this is or at least somewhat of a contributor to it in 2004 you know at this point in time i've been skating for a little bit skate parks were just starting to pop up but they were still definitely far away it was such a treat to get your hands on a skate park like you would i would drive two and a half hours to go to a skate park that wasn't even that good in fact i take that back i would drive two and a half hours to a skate park that fucking sucked just to skate a skate park because you wouldn't get kicked out. It had like a good ledge with angle iron on it at least, or at least the ledges had angle iron on it. They weren't even good ledges, terrible dimension. And it's just what everyone was doing. It was like that much more exciting. So we were looking up skate parks and any skate parks within like a five hour drive of me, I would travel to at some point in time on my days off of work. And I personally think that as skate parks became more and more frequent and got closer and closer to where you were, uh, as well as social media sort of just giving you this information of like Facebook will be like, hey, new skate park here, here's the address. Uh, it definitely toned down on the need to search for skate parks as much. And 2004, that year really does feel to me like a big boom in the start of skate parks. This new, whereas now it's so normalized and everyone's getting skate parks. If anything, people are just kind of using Apple Maps to find them or Google Maps, which you'd think would attribute to a higher number uh, later on. Maybe that's not a part of it, or maybe I'm totally wrong and no one is going to the skate parks, but it sure seems like a lot of people are going to the skate parks when I go there, both on the East Coast and the West Coast. I cannot speak for the rest of the country. I will also say that when I made my cross country road trip out here to move to California, me and Tyrone stopped at a bunch of skate parks on the way. None of the skate parks were doing that hot right then. So I don't have a real good finger on the pulse for those for those parts of the country. But if you're there, let me know. Is skateboarding doing good right now? I would love to know. It also says fewer people are going to skate park site directories. Who the fuck ever went to those? I remember, what was that one? It was like, uh, there's a skate park disciples or something. It was a skate park something, skatepark.com. And it had like a list of the parks and stuff like that. And I remember it got all the information so fucking wrong. I remember it took us to the wrong address. And then when we got there, it wasn't the skate park that was in the image. It was, a, it ended up being a better skate park, but it was not the skate park in the image at all. It had not, none of the information right. It was a complete shit show. We had to stop at a gas station asking where the skate park was. But yeah, no one's using skate park websites anymore. They're using Apple Maps and Google Maps. Now here we go. The Google search for the word skateboarding, once again, graph shows a big uh, decline. And I think once again, this trend might be, have something to do with 2004 is, what is that, Rob Deirdrick and Bam Margera peaking? Uh, so probably more of a general interest in skateboarding from the from the general public maybe? Because I do remember hearing a rumor, because that might've been, a, a, I mean, that's a huge skateboarding peak and I'm sure that could have been doing better than it is now. I remember hearing someone say that the only shoe company to ever outsell Nike for a season was DC and it was during Rob Deirdrick's peak and whether that's true or not, I just remember hearing that and be like, oh, that, that could totally be because I remember seeing DC shoes everywhere. Like you would go to the mall and just in every shop, regardless of what it was, they just had DC shoes. Big, bulky, ugly fucking ones. That's a reissuing I think now and it's doing well. Maybe that was the, the secret to skateboarding peaking. They, DC has to make those big puffy shoes. The less board feel in skateboarding, the better sales are.
for everybody. But once again, I think skateboarding has become so normalized that I think that less people are just searching the word skateboarding or simply the general public's interest in the word skateboarding is much less. And I think it does say something that it came out of this mainstream like Beer Margier, Rob Deirdrick, Tony Hawk hype, and then sort of turned into this fashion-y, everyone's collabing with skateboarding, underground hype, which honestly is like a whole other type of hype. It might not be as spoken, but it still does really well. Cool always sells and skateboarding is really cool right now. I always make the joke, I used to not have friends because I skated. it. Now a lot of people are my friends because I skate. Skateboardings have be kind of become the new jocks. Like I see it at skate parks where like, you know, you'll see like a lot of old heads talk about like, oh, like skateboarding used to be like a safe place for like us nerds. And now skateboarders are like, you know, yelling at other people for being nerds, for not skating the same way. And we've always had gatekeeping and skateboarding. It's that's nothing new, but it definitely seems to be more potent and more mainstream now. It used to kind of be like the kids who rode for the local shops would chit chat at skate shops and talk shit on this, that, and the other. And it didn't really go much further than that drama between skate shops or saying that this company's whack or whatever. But now it's like so over the top. Like I'll go to a skate park and just hear kids talk like, there's so much emphasis on like someone's drip these days. Like, oh, look at his outfit. For a lot of kids, it seems like it's more important for the way that someone looks on a skateboard than the way that they ride the skateboard. But that also could be because everyone's so good at skating now. It's just like, oh shit, well, it's hard to differentiate this dude who's insanely good from this dude who's insanely good. So let's talk about how dumb his shoes are. So who knows? I don't know. I actually don't believe that. That's just me talking shit. So right here, it says that participation in the last 17 years decreased from 8.75 million to less than 4 million, which, uh... Yeah, those, these numbers are just all over the place. Youth participation has dropped 50% in the last seven years. And once again, I don't know where they're getting these numbers from. A little bit later in this article, it talks about how, you know, it's like skate parks are just like taking a huge hit. They're talking about less attendance. And it's like, okay, well, if there's someone who's keeping track of attendance, they're either charging, they're either enforcing helmets, or they have open and closed hours. And those three things right there, skaters just don't go to them. There's too many free skate parks now. And there's no way that they're actually surveying how many people are going in and out of these skate parks. I'm sorry, it's just not happening. There's way too many skate parks in the middle of nowhere. And I can certainly see how back in the day when I grew up skating, all the skate parks were like that. So they probably were keeping track of all those numbers. And if, if everyone's being filtered into these very few skate parks that require this, Versus now you're not keeping track of 99% of the skateboarders going to all these skate parks. I could definitely see how it would make it seem way less participation. Not saying that that is what is actually happening, but it certainly seems possible. It also goes on to scooters swarming local skate parks because uh, Gen Z seems to be more into scootering than skateboarding. And so in California, there's not as many scooters as the rest of the country. At least where I was living in Pennsylvania, Maryland, the scooters at skate parks would outnumber skaters almost every single time. Uh, like. 80% of the time, and like usually greatly so. My local skate park became a scooter skate park. But when I went back, that wasn't the case anymore. So I don't know if scootering necessarily tapered off or they found their own little parks and there was a little bit of like segregation or something like that going on. But I will say that the number of scooters definitely seemed to be dwindling and the skateboarders were right back where it was when skateboarding seemed to have peaked for me on the East Coast where it seemed like everyone was skating Around 2012 is when I was like, man, everyone skates, which these numbers aren't reflecting it, but that's what I saw with my own eyes when I lived uh, in Maryland and I was making trips to New York and I was going to North Carolina. I was doing all this traveling for filming video parts and skating skate parks and etc. Then it also says this, like a dead skateboarding brands. And then it also, I thought it's funny that it had blind listed here. Like the companies that it has is New Deal, Axon, which came back, Hubba, 401, The Skateboarder magazine, which has been gone for, this article is like so behind. And then it has City Stars and Blind. City Stars just kind of made, made a came back, I think. Uh, blind's still here. Definitely seems like a dead man walking, like their entire team just left. In fact, I know a lot of people leaving over in that camp for, but yeah. Yeah, like I just really have trouble trusting this article and they're not really, and they don't really seem to give any other sources. It says Nike's skateboarding team retains big names like Eric Costin and Paul Rodriguez, so it's unlikely we'll see Nike SB's demise soon. And it's like, that's not the big names that Nike has anymore. Like this is, it says, it's saying 2020, but this these names and it's just not all adding up. And this one's a kicker for me. Pro skateboarders like Tony Hawk, Greg Lutzka, and Dan Murphy have recently seen sponsorships either reduce their salaries or say their farewells due to the bad economy. And what's really interesting about that is, okay, uh, Tony Hawk, obviously, anything involving him and money makes sense. Uh, Greg Lutzka will ride for literally anything. He like rode for Toyota. He rode for some alcohol company. He's one of the first people on Squaw Candy. He literally has a sponsor for anything. So, okay, I kind of get that even though he's super not relevant. Uh, and then Dan Murphy. It's almost like whoever wrote this article lives in North Carolina or wherever Dan Murphy lives now and just like knows him. And was just like, hey man, how's the skateboarding thing going? And Dan's like, I haven't been pro for fucking 10 years. And then the guy was like, man, sounds really rough. Sounds like you're getting less money. I and mean, right here it says at the beginning of the decade, skateboarding was extremely popular. In fact, there was more American skateboarders in 2000 than playing baseball in 2020 that led to the creation of things like fuel tv that help people stay connected to action 
action sports. And then I, I guess it's sort of like saying like, since Fuel TV went under, that's a sign that it just wasn't doing as well. But Fuel TV fucking sucked. Skate Maps was good. Captain and Casey show was literally just rerun clips of Logic videos that I already owned with the bonus of having Captain and Casey talk over it, which was actually kind of amusing. Uh, but they also like took out all the music that was like used for these Logic videos, which was, you know, kind of like set the tone and they didn't re-edit the footage. They just used the same footage and then edit it music overlapping everything. And it was just so god awful to watch. One of the very few mainstream television things to get that right was Blue Torch. And it wasn't, that was like an extreme sports thing where it had surfing and blah, blah, blah. But like when it had skateboarding stuff, it was like interesting articles. I remember one with Eric Bork where he talks about like getting a skate park built, which I think he still does, does to this day. And he was like absolutely killing the skate park. Kind of original footage that you weren't seeing anywhere else. They showed video parts from Art Bars, Subtitles and Seagulls, like actual fully edit it, like using the music from the video. It was so rad. My first exposure to skaters like Ethan Fowler and stuff like that. And just ever since then, they just been dropping the ball. Side note though, I do think it was kind of funny Comcast. I think it was one of those was like, they'd have like skate videos that you could watch on their little account back when everyone was just, you know, scrolling with remotes before we were watching everything online. And they would have like the elementality video and then they would randomly have like a local video of some kids who like built a skate park behind their garage and it was so sick to watch. And I remember the intro was the instrumental part of the Stars of Projectors by Modest Mouse. And it was just like some super low budget. Like these kids are like kick flipping off loading docks, but it was like on the Comcast, like right next to the Element video. So like, I bet you they got like a lot of views from that. It must've been like someone who worked there, his kids made the video was like, yeah, I'll get it on there for you. But I always thought that was kind of cool. Comment if you saw that video or, or no, have any idea what I'm talking about. Because it wasn't Comcast, it was like one of those things though. Now here's another article that, it's like a website called Skateboarding HQ. And he's like talking about what he's seeing at his local park specifically. And about how there used to be like way more scooters uh, pre-2020. And maybe a couple skateboarders, but now his local skate park is thriving with both young and older skateboard skateboarders. And then he has a little update right below. It says skateboarding is back to normal compared to 2020 and 2021. There's a steep decline according to Google Trends. <gasps> So what he's saying is skateboarding seemed to make a comeback in 2000 and then went right back to dying. But that's according to Google Trends. And I don't, I don't fucking, there's just way too much to go into statistics to try to interpret interpret them at like face value. I, what, what was that one uh, little documentary it was called? They talk about polio and about how it would spike during the summer. So there was like all these people who thought that what was causing polio was ice cream because they didn't think right out, right out the gate that maybe the heat was making it be more active and transferable. So you can really interpret statistics any way to suit you. If you need more information on that, go watch Fox News and then watch another news network and be like, oh, same statistics, completely different reasoning. More stuff about the skateboarding market size. Oh, here's a nice little uh, thing showing that skateboarding separated into street boards, cruiser boards and long boards and other, I wanna know what other is by the way. Is other like all the random skateboards that Braille is making, like just like it's like a skateboard made out of recycled antidepressants or whatever buzzword that they're trying to squeeze into their video. I don't know what other could actually be, but this is saying that uh, skateboarding is doing great and Gen, Gen Z is playing a, a vital role in it. Then it goes on to like the fashion world and getting into skateboarding with uh, some catwalks and blah, 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 using skateboarding. Uh, then a bunch of vague information of different companies. It talks about in 2018, for instance, Interior Ikea Systems launched its first skateboard as part of a furniture and clothing line in Southern California. I haven't heard anything about Ikea having a skateboard. Uh, I'm assuming no one could fucking find it. So good job, Ikea. I'd also like to see how much more complicated Ikea could have made a skateboard to put together. Cause I don't care what anyone says, no matter how simple they make it. Cause I've built shelves from scratch and I've also built shelves from Ikea. And one was way harder than the other, and it was definitely Ikea. Those screws that they give you, the, like the plastic, it's just so shitty and it doesn't work and it has to be so precise and exact. Uh, yeah, no thanks. Stop going to Ikea, just go to Google. It's literally easier. Longboards is the fastest growing product and I can't speak for the rest of the country, but I will say people are riding around longboards everywhere in California, like just to get around. Like, like for every Lime scooter that I see out here, I don't think they have Lime scooters every, everywhere, but <clears throat> there's electric scooters that the cities will rent people. I see like five longboards and then, and then teenagers are the number one people who ride a skateboard. So yeah, that's all the information that I saw. That's my opinion on all the information. I don't know if I think skateboarding's dying. <laughs> it's funny as I, I don't really even have an actual opinion on it. That was just mostly me playing devil's advocate to every fucking thing that I read. But if I really think about it, I think right now, 2022, this month, beginning of October, skateboarding is doing okay, but the after effects of the pandemic is definitely straining on the industry, at least. We sure are getting a lot of skate parks and that's okay with me. If skateboarding died, I would definitely have to go back to getting a normal job because no one would watch these videos, but the skate parks would be empty and I'm sure they wouldn't be tearing them down anytime soon, or at least not before I'm too old to skateboard the way I want to skateboard. So win, win, kind of, even though I don't look forward to going back to the construction world. I know it's 
probably inevitable. Comment below what you think. I'd like to see some discussions in there. Uh, I'll definitely get on a couple myself. But that was fun for me. Obviously talking videos aren't my forte, but no one's skating today. It's kind of raining and I wanted to make a video. So that's, uh, yep, sorry. Well, that sucked.